welcome to episode one of the Tangerine Knits podcast. My name is Ichi and I live in Virginia. I love to knit and crochet and do a lot of other yarn crafts like macrame and weaving and punch needling. So I'd love to have this opportunity to share some of what I've been working on with you. Um, recently though, I have been fully into knitting and so that's what I'll be talking to you about today. I'll be following the standard format of going through my finished objects, then the whips, and then acquisitions. And so I'll start with the first finished object, which is the garment I'm wearing right now. This is the Cassia Square Neck by Refined Knitwear. Um, it has a square neck, as the name suggests, as well as these really beautiful puff sleeves. The main modification I did in this project is to knit it short sleeves instead of long sleeves, as the pattern calls for. I first found this pattern when I was browsing Ravelry and when I saw someone sample of this pattern, it was just calling out my name. I really love square necks and puff sleeves. A lot of the clothing in my just store-bought garments have one or both of these features and so I thought what better opportunity to knit one myself. And the pattern itself called for two strands of mohair held together, but I unfortunately have very sensitive skin, so I didn't think that I would be able to tolerate uh, next to skin a mohair garment. And so I used Drops alpa Brushed Alpaca Silk. It is 77% alpaca and 23% silk. It is a very airy fabric. It is pretty thick, so it's a thicker strand than mohair, and so I knitted it single-stranded. And I used 3.75 millimeter needles to achieve a pretty opaque fabric. I have some of that yarn left over here. It is a very fluffy uh, yarn, and here is kind of what the strand looks like. As you can see, it's not as halo-y as a mohair might be, but it still resulted in a pretty fluffy fabric. The reason I knit this short sleeves is primarily because I was running out of yarn. So as I was mostly done with the body, I started with the sleeves. And after I knit a length of sleeve, I realized that I've been using a lot more of the skein than I thought. And so I weighed the skein before and after I started the sleeves. And I measure the length of the sleeves so I can figure out what weight of yarn it took me to knit that length of sleeve. And then I figured out the full length that I would need to achieve long sleeves from both arms and realized that I definitely didn't have enough. I probably had enough to knit up to the elbows for both sleeves, but instead I decided that I would like a shorter sleeve a little bit better. I also, instead of using a ribbing at the bottom of the sleeve as the pattern calls for for the long sleeves, which I think looks quite nice, I ended up doing just an I-cord bind off for the short sleeves. So it looks a little bit similar to the Rubus blouse, also by Refined Knitwear, but it is more of a puff shoulder versus a balloon sleeve, unlike that pattern. So overall, I really enjoyed this pattern. I think it's really well written. Another um, detail that I'm not sure if you can see is that the raglans are eyelets instead of just standard raglan stitches, which I think is a really nice detail. It probably would show up more prominently maybe on mohair pieces, but this yarn is so fluffy and I knit in such a, a tight gauge that you can't really see the eyelets, unfortunately. What else? Overall, this yarn, this uh, fabric is very, very comfortable. So as I mentioned, I have sensitive skin and in fact, a lot of times alpaca can be a little too prickly for me to comfortably wear. But this, perhaps because it's brushed, it doesn't have a lot of those long fibers that is what I assume causes alpaca to be prickly. This is extremely comfortable. I think I can definitely wear it all day long without having any issues. It was a bit difficult to knit, or I should say it's a bit difficult to frog. And so because it's so fuzzy, it really snags on itself and knots. And so every time if I made a mistake to knit backwards or to frog, it really took quite a long time and resulted in a lot of yarn breakage. At first I left the ends out to weave in, but then eventually I learned the magic knot method because it just became to be too many knots because I wasn't able to successfully unravel um, every time I needed to do that. So for example, at first I knit the sleeves pretty long, thinking I would make it long sleeve, and when I didn't want to do that anymore, frogging it was a bit of a tall order. But in the end, it all worked out okay. I'm very, very pleased with this pattern, and I would consider knitting it again. 
All right, the next finished object that I have, this is the Balaclava Number no. 1 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. The original pattern called for one strand cashmere and one strand uh, mohair, resulting in a 22-ish stitch gauge, I believe. And again, because I didn't think I would be able to tolerate mohair, especially around my neck and face, which are very sensitive parts of your skin, I ended up using Cascade 220 Superwash Merino in the color Silver Heather. I figured that if any <laughs> anything would be okay around my neck and my face, it would be a Superwash Merino. And I'm happy to report that it feels very, very comfortable around my skin. I have no issues wearing it. Not that I've really worn it out because it's still quite warm, but I'm very excited to have this for the winter. I have been looking forward to having something like this for a long time. In fact, I knit this in October when it was still like 70 degrees out. <laughs> it is in this broken rib pattern, which I think is very beautiful, especially after blocking. So after I blocked this, everything, all the stitches just laid so beautifully. In terms of the knitting experience, there was a lot of picking up stitches. So you have to pick up stitches all along the crown here and also all along the face opening in order to make this ribbing. Picking up stitches using a superwash yarn and metal needles was a bit challenging just because there was a lot of slippage happening. You're not picking up every single stitch. It's like every pick up every couple of stitches. And also I think it was approximate. And so a lot of times I would realize that I have too many additional stitches to pick up I needed to kind of, you know, undo the picking of the stitches to, to do it more evenly. That could have also been my fault instead of the pattern's fault. But overall, I think it worked out pretty nicely. And it is a very, very cozy garment that I think will be very practical as well. The next finished object that I have is this Sunday sweater by My Favorite Things Knitwear. This is knit using Camaro Snefnug, which is recommended in the pattern. I didn't go so rogue this time, but I did once again drop the mohair. Um, so I ended up sizing down two needle sizes in order to knit this Camaro Snefnug single stranded. But this yarn, as you can see, is actually quite fuzzy and it still has a halo effect. In fact, I don't think in this case I'm missing out too much by not having the mohair. This yarn, um, the Snefnug, it means snowflake in the language <laughs> that Snuffnug is in. And the yarn itself is a blown yarn that consists of a cotton tube with a mix of alpaca and merino wrapped around it. So the specific composition is 55% baby alpaca, 10% extra fine merino, and 35% cotton. I used about eight and a half skeins of this, um, of this single stranded for a size small measurements. I think I actually ended up knitting a size medium. So I sized up one size to be able to get the measurements that I want. I have a couple of things to say about the experience of knitting this. Overall, I think it would have been a really quick knit if I had done it right the first time. The first issue I guess that I ran into was that when I was knitting the ribbing for this beautiful, very signature um, infinity rib yoke of this sweater is that when I was knitting the ribbing, I realized that the final knit stitch before every purl stitch was very loose. So you can still kind of see that. But the first time I did it, it was really atrocious to the point where I didn't have confidence that it would even block out. So I ended up looking up techniques on how people go about knitting ribbing that's neater. And the technique I found that ended up working for me is um, after you finish the knit stitches of the ribbing, before a purl stitch, normally the working yarn is in front of your needle, but instead you put it behind your needle, pull it tight, and then put it back in front of your needle to be able to continue to purl. And that in the end helped me a lot. And although you can still see some loose stitches if you really examine it, I don't think it's quite as noticeable if you're just looking at this up front. Whereas previously, I think it was quite noticeable. And so I'll knit the technique video that I found really helpful in the video description below. The other, the other challenge that I face with this uh, otherwise very lovely pattern is, again, something of me going a bit rogue. So the pattern originally calls for a, a bell sleeve that you, know, you knit up and down and then you start increasing to make a bell sleeve. 
And so I had, you know, watched some other podcasters knit this garment. And for example, Hive Knits, uh, who I'll link down below, who has really lovely um, knitwear patterns and podcasts. She made the very good point that bell sleeves are really difficult to stuff into coats. She decided to knit the sleeves just up and down with a cuff to cinch it in at the end. And I decided to do that as well. But because of the way the body, when I first finished it, it felt very fitted. And then the sleeves were also pretty fitted. The overall result was just a very fitted sweater, which is not what I had envisioned this to be. I wanted it to be, you know, decently oversized or at least very relaxed. So at first I thought maybe I got the measurements wrong. Like I said, I did have to go up a size. Maybe I should have gone up two sizes because my gauge was pretty tight. Um, then I looked at the pictures again, and I think that the body of this sweater is not as oversized as a lot of other petite knit patterns because the sleeves are so oversized. And so in order to get the proportions to be right, she didn't have just a very large sleeves and a very large body. And also the sleeves at the top here, um, at least in the version in the size that I knit, is also not as oversized as some other petite knit patterns where you have a very, very baggy sleeve up sleeve up. Uh, up here. And so because of that, I realized without the bell sleeves, that's what's causing my sweater to look very fitted. And so I decided in the end to undo the Italian bind off of my sleeves, rip the sleeves back, um, and then properly follow the pattern and do the increases. I did knit it shorter than it called for because I generally have short arms and so I didn't want this to be so long. Um, and in the end, I think this fits a lot better. And because of the larger sleeves, the body no longer feels as fitted, even though, you know, it is less positive ease than a lot of other sweaters that I really like. So overall, I'm very happy with this sweater. The weather has actually been quite warm lately, so I haven't had a chance to really take this out for a spin outside, but from just trying it on around the house, it is very, very warm. So I think it'll be very cozy to wear when the temperature starts dropping. And this yarn itself is very cozy as well. Um, I think it's a little bit pricklier than this brushed alpaca silk, probably because the fibers are, you know, if you can, I'm not sure if you can see, but there's a lot of these long fibers, which I think is what causes alpaca to be prickly to my very sensitive skin. Um, you very well may not have this issue. In fact, you know, just holding it, it feels so cozy. Like, yeah, it feels really, really soft and nice. And also it's a little bit heathered looking, um, at least this colorway, because the cotton tube is white and then the fibers are mostly pink, but also there's some gray or even dark charcoal or black fibers as well. So as you can see, there's really a nice dimension to this fabric. So overall, yeah, very happy with this pattern and excited to wear it. My final finished object is the Field Day Cardigan by Ozetta. And the yarn I knit this out of is Remix by Barocco. And this yarn has a lot of things in it. I'll read it off for you. It's got 30% nylon, 27% cotton, 24% acrylic, 10% silk, and 9% linen. And I feel like primarily it feels very cottony to me. That's what I would guess if I didn't know what this yarn was made of. And it's all recycled fibers, which is very cool. The colorway is almond. And I actually originally got this yarn to knit the My Favorite Things Knitwear sweater number nine, but then I decided that this isn't the yarn I wanted for that sweater. So I really um, kind of for this project started with the yarn already in hand and just trying to find a pattern for it. And I believe the sample that was at a knit for this cardigan is in a color very similar, albeit in a very different yarn base. And so I decided to go for it. As I may have mentioned, I didn't use the right gauge or the right yarn weight for this project. So my gauge was pretty large compared to the um, the pattern. I ended up knitting the smallest size and this is still a little bit more oversized than my normal garment size, but I'm not mad about it. I think it still fits very, um, very cozy, very oversized. Something I liked about this is that the button band is knit continuously. So you just kind of knit the button band as you go instead of picking up stitches all around the edge. I think that would be fine too, and I do want to knit a cardigan where you do pick up stitches along the neckline for the 
button band, but I think at this time, this was my first cardigan. I was a little bit intimidated by how many stitches you'd have to pick up. So um, this was a very helpful feature that kind of gave me the uh, motivation to knit something like this. For the actual buttonholes, um, the pattern I think calls for using long tail cast on for the buttonholes, but I ended up trying out the knitted cast on option just because I read online that it resulted in a more sturdy buttonhole. And so I did that knitted cast on for the second two buttonholes and they are a bit tighter, but actually the, the way the pattern called for it is totally fine. The buttons are not really going anywhere if I just use the, the long tail cast on. This also, it's a drop shoulder construction and it's actually my first time knitting any drop shoulder garment. And so I will say Ozetta's uh, pattern is very clear with a lot of diagrams and also video links to different techniques that she mentioned in the pattern. So I learned a lot of techniques just by, by working on this cardigan. So for example, um, provisional cast on I never done before. German short rows, this is my first time doing German short rows, first time doing drop shoulder and first time doing buttonholes. <laughs> So yeah, really have learned a lot through this. And in the end, um, the yarn, my yarn choice I feel okay about. I think this is probably not my favorite, favorite look of a yarn, but it does feel very cozy. And overall, I think I definitely would wear this around um, for more relaxed days. All right, that's it on my finished objects. There there were quite a number of large finish objects this time because this is the first episode, so there's no preset start date for when to start counting for my finish objects. I think in the future, I likely will not have as many um, large finish objects. So now I'll go on to my whips. The first whip is this step-by-step -step sweater by Handmade by Florence. And I knit this using the Noro Miyabi in the colorway 04. The genesis of this project is really this yarn. So I went to my local knitting store, local yarn store, to purchase more skeins of a yarn that I already had. I'll show that in my acquisitions shortly. But it was supposed to be an in and out trip. I even got there like 15 minutes before they were supposed to close. So I just picked up the, the skeins that I wanted and while they were kindly winding my yarn into a cake for me, I was browsing the store and wandered into the sales section and saw that this yarn which I'll show here, um, was on sale. It was like 50% off. There were so many colorways. And so I kind of just bought it on impulse. I was debating between this color and a different color. And then all three sales ladies, at that time there was nobody else in the store. They were all kind of helping me decide. And in the end I felt like, um, I just, yeah, again, impulse bought this yarn, which I will first say that it's a very, very lovely yarn. But as soon as I walked out of the store, I started regretting it because, you know, let me show it on here. The colors that I see, um, really love this brown, really love this purple. But I think some of these grays are a little bit cooler toned and I normally don't go for cooler tones. And so when I was looking at it in a cake, I also didn't really know how it would look. I was very hesitant to like about what to do with this yarn. But um, I decided that I, you know, already have it. I might as well make good use of it. So I decided to knit a just a plain sweater in order to let the yarn really shine. And I went for the step-by-step -step sweater pattern by Handmade by Florence. This pattern is uh, written with a complete beginner in mind. She has even has a video, a very, very detailed, nice video, kind of walking through everything you would have to do in order to make a sweater like this. But at the same time, she wanted people who had a little bit of knitting experience to still be able to knit a garment that they would like to wear. She, for example, has a funnel neck collar option um, or a folded collar neck, uh, folded collar neck uh, option. And she also had optional German short row shaping for the back. So I did opt to do the German short row shaping. And then for the, the neck, I chose the funnel neck option but ended up doing the tubular cast on. It was my first time doing the tubular cast on so I can get a, a more finished looking edge. But actually I'm thinking that I might end up sewing the neckband down anyway to get a folded collar because I think this, this looks quite nice. Overall, I think it's a very nice pattern. It's even a free pattern, so I'm very grateful for that. It's really well written, extremely clear, and I absolutely think it would be a good fit for a beginner, but I think I also will be very happy with how this turns out as a final product. And this colorway 
it's growing on me. I think I think it does look quite nice and I am now more excited to wear now that I've knitted up and seen what it looks like. I've never used a self-striping yarn before and so when I was knitting the sleeves, I really wanted to make sure that the the pattern of the stripes kind of follow what it's been from the yoke, but I did notice that, you know, because the yarn goes through such a high like a large circumference for the yoke and a really small circumference for the sleeves that the size of the stripes get much much bigger on the sleeves and i'm sure there's ways around that like i could cut out certain sections of the yarn and splice it back together so that the stripes are about the same width but i decided to not to bother with it but i will try to make sure that um the the order of the stripes match on both sleeves. So I'm going to be doing some cutting and splicing of the yarn. So yeah, I'm looking forward to finishing this. I think it'll be really nice and cozy to wear. Oh, the yarn itself is made out of cashmere and wool. So let me check my notes. It is 68% wool and 32% cashmere. So yeah, it's quite soft. Looking forward to finishing that. And my second and last whip that I'll show is the Ingrid sweater. So I haven't made a whole lot of progress on it. This is the, the back yoke. Um, I have tried every section though. So the moss section, moss stitch section, the eyelet section and the cable section and the ribbing section. I think these are all the sections of the pattern. Um, and I've done some of everything now on the back yoke. It's knit using Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the color Light Cognac. So, yeah, I think it'll be very nice. Right now it reminds me of a holiday cookie, which I'm very, very excited about. I hope I get to finish this before the holidays, and um, I'm really excited to wear this. Oh, I'll say that this pattern I have been eyeing ever since I first started knitting. I really wanted to knit the Ingrid, card uh, Ingrid sweater. It did. It is noted on Petite Knit's website that it's a five star out of five for difficulty. So I was pretty hesitant to do that. And now that I've tried it, I think it's definitely not for a total beginner, but it's also not as difficult as I may have imagined. You do have to really pay attention as to you know, follow the pattern correctly. And I did have to redo part of the cables until I realized kind of how it's supposed to work. But now that I've gotten the hang of it, I think the rest of it will be pretty, um, will go pretty smoothly. But I also say it may also be because this is not my very first drop shoulder pattern anymore. So because of that Ozetta cardigan, I feel, you know, more confident about tackling a drop shoulder construction, which this is going to be. So yeah, very fun to knit so far and I'm excited to continue on with this. All right, so that's it for acquisitions. Uh, that's it for, excuse me, whips. I'll now go into acquisitions. So the first acquisition that I'll show is going to be this com infamous combination of Knitting for Olive Merino and Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair. The colors are uh, dark cognac for the merino and ochre brown for the soft silk mohair. I haven't swatched it yet to see exactly what it would look like. I'm hoping it would be like a nice warm camely, warm brown type of color and so I hope it does look like that. This is my first time purchasing actual mohair so as I mentioned earlier I have sensitive skin so I didn't think I would be able to tolerate mohair. In fact I once purchased a um, mohair alternative that's made of alpaca, wool, and tensile. It's the Camaro's Midnight Soul. It was recommended by the Knit Pearl, Girl, Knit Pearl Girl as a nice mohair alternative. And I totally agree that it's a beautiful alternative. It looks very halo-y, just like mohair. But unfortunately, it's still just quite prickly on my skin, maybe because of the nature of the long fibers. And so I kind of didn't know if mohair would or mohair or mohair-like fibers are really going to be in my life. But I have heard so many good things about how soft the soft silk mohair is that I really wanted to just give it one try at least. And so my thinking is that I will knit the Friday slipover using this combination because a vest is, you know, not that large of a garment. There are no sleeves, so I think it's a lower risk to try it lower stakes to try it and also it's going to be worn over a shirt anyway and not directly on my skin so even if I can't tolerate next to skin totally fine because it is a vest so that's my thinking I am a little bit cautious 
about how this, I know that this yarn people say sheds a lot. So I'll have to see how that works out for me, but I will keep you posted. The next acquisition that I have is this Patagonia Organic Merino by Juniper Moon Farms. In again, this rust color, very similar to what I'm wearing now. I do think this is probably my favorite colorway to wear. I feel like I wanna make every, <laughs> every garment out of this color, but at the same time, it's a distinctively fall colorway. The story behind this acquisition is that I actually already had two skeins in stash from a couple of months ago when I went to my local yarn store and the sales lady recommended this base. She said it's one of her favorite bases and just her go-to workhorse yarn for anything. So I initially purchased two skeins to make the Ballerina Wrap Top by Two of Wands, but in the end I decided that because the pattern is so cropped, I didn't want to knit it out of a wool because just felt like it wasn't that practical. If it's going to be such a warm garment, then it probably shouldn't be so cropped. And then I decided to at first make this Friday slipover out of this because I already had the right amount of yardage of this yarn. But then I changed my mind because I didn't think that I would really wear a vest in this colorway, although this is my favorite color. And so the next thing I tried was to cast on the Ingrid sweater using this yarn, but it just wasn't the right gauge. I even knit like the full moss section, the moss stitch section of the back yoke and realized that it's just too, too holy. This is a DK weight and then the pattern called for really a worsted weight. Even though I sized down on needles, it just, it just wasn't really going to work out. So I feel like this yarn has really not had a home for a long time. Oh, I should say that when I decided to knit the Ingrid sweater, I, that's why I went back to acquire two more skins of this. So I originally had two skeins, wanted to switch which projects I worked on with it. And so then I got uh, two more skeins to knit a full sweater instead of like either a crop sweater or a vest. But because the Ingrid sweater didn't quite work out, my current plan is to knit an April cardigan using this because the April cardigan is DK weight. I don't know if I'll change my mind. I really hope I won't because this yarn, I've been so excited to, to use it. I think maybe because this is one of my first like really nice natural material yarns that I've gotten. I have high hope for the garment living up to this so that I may be, you know, having like cold feet with casting on anything. But I do think the April cardigan would be a good fit in that it would be a garment that I would want to wear and it's actually the right gauge. I'll also say that I've swatched this yarn and it is very soft. Like for example, I think the knitting for Olive Merino, I've heard that it does become softer, but this feels just extremely soft around my over my skin. I don't think I would have an issue wearing it, even though it's not super wash. So I'll keep you posted on what I do with this. Maybe I'll cast it on uh, in the next episode. Okay, so my last acquisition is not yarn, but it is alpaca. It's an alpaca, and it's actually from my mom. Um, it's it's made of alpaca, so it's an alpaca, and it's made out of alpaca. So I don't know if you can see, but this fur is extremely just bouncy and so dense and it, it feels like an alpaca and it is so soft to hold and I've been putting it in my yarn corner in the background so maybe I should actually plot this here in my background <laughs> in the future episodes but I really like I really like this uh, little alpaca mascot so yeah I wanted to share this really quickly thanks mom for getting this for me all right, and so that is a wrap on the first episode. Thank you for watching if you made it this far, and I hope to see you again in another episode very soon. Bye.